Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Santa Clara University. The academic procession of Santa Clara University faculty, administration, student representatives, trustees, regents, and visiting delegates will begin momentarily. We ask that you please take your seats and clear the aisles for the procession to enter. And in keeping with the dignity of the ceremony, please silence your cell phones. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone, may I please have your attention? If there is an incident during today's inauguration, please proceed to the nearest emergency exit. Follow the instructions of event staff and walk to a designated emergency assembly point at the leaving parking lot area and a Colty Way, Sherman Street, in front of the campus safety, Alumni Park, or the Cowell parking lot. We want to thank you for your cooperation. Distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, everyone, we are pleased to commence the inauguration ceremony of Santa Clara University's 30th president. All, please stand for the presentation of the colors. Join me in welcoming the University Marshal, Matthew Duncan, Associate Dean of Student Life. Now marching in is the Santa Clara University ROTC Color Guard. You may now please be seated for the dressing of the stage and the inaugural procession. This academic procession includes representatives from all areas of the university. They will march behind large banners displaying the names of Santa Clara's constituent groups. Now entering are student representatives from the residential learning communities. The RLCs provide a distinct opportunity for Santa Clara University students to connect and learn both inside and outside of the classroom, along with fellow students, staff, and faculty. Alpha Residential Learning Community. Cura Residential Learning Community. Sci-Fi Residential Learning Community. Da Vinci Residential Learning Community. Loyola Residential Learning Community. Magis Residential Learning Community. Modern Perspectives Residential Learning Community. Unity Residential Learning Community. University Villas and Nobly Communities. Next are Santa Clara University's Division I Student Athletes. Representatives from the Association of Jesuit Colleges and Universities, Georgetown University, St. Louis University, Spring Hill College, Xavier University, Fordham University, College of the Holy Cross, St. Joseph's University, Santa Clara University, Leona University, Maryland, University of San Francisco, 
Boston College, Canisius College, Loyola University Chicago, St. Peter's University, Regis University, University of Detroit Mercy, Creighton University, Marquette University, John Carroll University, Gonzaga University, St. John's College, University of Scranton, Seattle University, Rockhurst University, Loyola Marymount University, Loyola University, New Orleans, Fair, Fair, Fairfield University, Le Moyne College. Next, our visiting academic delegates who are marching on behalf of their colleges and universities from across the country. Many have traveled far to join us, and we are grateful for their participation today. We are now joined by alumni representatives. Alumni representatives spanning from classes from 1950 to, 19, to 2022. Santa Clara University alumni.
Now entering are members of the esteemed faculty of Santa Clara University. Following are the Santa Clara University Board of Fellows, Board of Regents, and Alumni Association Board of Directors.
Now entering are the directors of the Centers of Distinction and University and the University of Academic Administrators. We are now joined by the President's Cabinet. And now, please stand for the presidential platform as we welcome the Board of Trustees, and our greeters, including alumni, secretary, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Carrying the mace is Professor Tom Turley. Please welcome our greeters, including distinguished alumni, Secretary Janet Napolitano and Secretary Leon Panetta. Former acting president, Lisa Kloppenberg. The 28th president of Santa Clara University, the Reverend Michael Ng of the Society of Jesus. Please welcome the chair of the Board of Trustees, Larry Sonsini. and the Provincial of the USA West Province of the Society of Jesus, the very Reverend Sean Carroll. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone, please join me in welcoming the 30th President of Santa Clara University, President Julie Sullivan.
please take your seats. Please welcome acting provost Ed Ryan and Kate Morris. President Sullivan, members of the university boards, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, students, parents, family, and friends, welcome. We are blessed to be here today on this gorgeous campus, surrounded by members of the Bronco family, from our newest students to our most prominent alumni. This is truly a remarkable and historic day in the life of Santa Clara. Let us take a moment to put this day and this year in context. This is the seventh day of October in the year of our Lord, 2022. It is also the 828th year since the birth of Claire of Assisi, the 482nd year since the founding of the Society of Jesus, the 171st year since Santa Clara began offering instruction, the 61st year since women were admitted to Santa Clara. The fifth year since Santa Clara was recognized for its fourth Rhodes Scholar. The second year since Santa Clara won its third national championship in soccer. And the 95th day since President Julie Sullivan became the first lay person and the first woman to serve as president of Santa Clara University. Today, we truly celebrate the gift of President Julie Sullivan as our 30th president. As we begin our formal ceremony, I am pleased to invite to the podium Charlene Nijme, chairwoman of the Mawekma Ohlone tribe of San Francisco Bay, and Monica Ariano, vice chairwoman, who will start with words of welcome. Jorge Tuhi, Ganak Raka, Monica Villariano, Wetrush Kuchush, Moak Maloni Tribe, San Francisco Bay Area Talk. Good day. I greet you in our native Chochenyo language. I am Monica Villariano. I am the Vice Chairwoman for the Moak Maloni Tribe of the San Francisco Bay Area. Ganamin Ganak Apakush Joel. Chocho Ganak Papakush Albert. Chocho Ganak Melekush Mercedes. Ganak Suyakma Marin. I am the daughter of Joel Ariano, granddaughter of Albert Marin Ariano, and great granddaughter of Mercedes Marin. I am from the Marin lineage of the Verona Band of the Alisar Rancheria, traditionally located in Pleasanton, California. As traditionally done, and in honor of our ancestors, we offer an opening prayer in our native Chochenyo language as a blessing for the inauguration of Santa Clara University President Julie Sullivan in the city of Santa Clara, Thamian ancestral Moekma Ohlone territory. Moekma Isai Chochenyo, the people's prayer in Chochenyo. Exuyakma, ekachokma, ruhi, hoshe roket tamakam kam haikne nomo, heme tamakin mak rote himeka, makin mak alship takamishik hiti nomo, hemen hesmin menehishme ki mish makin, Makish horse makinan tamak rote himetka mat yeku ruai tamak kami aye. Tamak rote himetka haiki mak makinan. Tamak rote himetka holie mak mak ruye. Heme tamakin hishmet sin. Makish horse makinan utashbut makam mak iwe. Thank you. Ho. Horse tuhi. Ganakraka Charlene Nijme Wetrish Mowakma Wulwulum San Francisco Bay Area Talk. Good day, I greet you in our native Chochenyo language. My name is Charlene Nijme and I'm the chairwoman for the Mowakma Ohlone tribe of the San Francisco Bay Area. I am the granddaughter of Dolores Sanchez, who was born on the Sonol Rancheria in 1911. 
and great-granddaughter of Ramona Marin, who was born on the Aliseo Rancheria near Pleasanton in 1893. We would like to recognize that when we come together at Santa Clara University and Mission Santa Clara in the city of Santa Clara for the inauguration of Santa Clara University President Julie Sullivan, we are gathered on the ethno-historic ter tribal territory of the Thamian Ohlone speaking tribal groups of the greater Santa Clara Valley, which includes the lands of the Thamian, Alsons, Matalans, and the Paleños, whose tribal region was named after their powerful Capitan Chief Capitan Pala and the two Mexican land grants located in the East Hills above San Jose and who were intermarried with the direct ancestors of some of our Muwekma lineages enrolled in our tribe of the San Francisco Bay Area. The present day Muwekma Ohlone tribe with an enrolled Bureau of Indian Affairs documented membership of 600 members is comprised of all the known surviving Indian lineages aboriginal to the San Francisco Bay region who trace our tribe's ancestry through the Mishiomica, Mission Santa Clara, De Tamien, San Jose, and San Francisco during the advent of the His Hispano-European Empire into Alta California, beginning in AD 1769. Makmuwekma Suyakma, our Muwekma families are the successors and living members of the sovereign, historic, previously recognized Verona Band of Alameda County, now formally recognized as the Muwekma Tribe of the San Francisco Bay Area. In the Chocheno Ohlone language, Muwekma means la gente, the people. The lands on which Santa Clara University and Mission Santa Clara, the city of Santa Clara have been established, was and continues to be great of great spiritual significance and historic imp historical importance for our Muwekma Ohlone tribal people and other familial descendants of the Verona Band. We recognize that every member of the greater Santa Clara community has and continues to benefit from the use and occupation of this land since it was founded in 1777. Consistent with the values of community, inclusion, and diversity, we have a responsibility to acknowledge and make known through various enterprises Santa Clara University's relationship to the Native peoples. As members of the Santa Clara community, it is vitally important that not only we recognize the history of the land on which we live, work, and learn, but also we recognize the Muwekma Ohlone people are alive and thriving members of the Santa Clara and broader Bay Area communities today. We would like to thank Santa Clara University and President Sullivan for inviting the Muwekma Ohlone tribe to read our Muwekma tribal land acknowledgement and offer a prayer in our native Chochenyo language. Ho. Also, on behalf of the Muwekma Ohlone tribe, we would like to gift um, President Sullivan an abalone necklace. The meaning of the abalone in our tribe means power, resilience, and these are the qualities we see in President Sullivan. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Charlene. Now we would like to ask everyone to stand for the national anthem which will be performed by the Santa Clara University Chamber Singers and the University Symphony Orchestra. The colors will be presented by members of the Santa Clara University ROTC program.
thank you to our singers. Thank you to our singers and ROTC representatives. I now have the pleasure of inviting Reverend Larry Snyder, retired Vice President for Mission, University of St. Thomas in Minnesota, to offer an opening prayer. The prophet Micah summarizes the path of discipleship with these words. What does the Lord require of you? Only this, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. With that as our inspiration this morning, we pause during this historic celebration to ask the blessing of our gracious God upon this place of higher learning its venerable mission, and especially on Dr. Julie Sullivan, its 30th president. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we believe that the pursuit of knowledge allows us to glimpse you, who is the source of all truth and wisdom. Those whose vocation is in academia hold an esteemed place in your desire for the development and enrichment of all individuals. We ask you today to pour out your blessings on this university, its faculty, students, staff, and administrators, that this may truly be a place where knowledge informs the intellect and values form the person. May this pursuit of learning further the establishment of justice in our community and world and mercy in our hearts toward our fellow human beings, especially those who have known no mercy but God's. May this be a place that respects not only ideas and differences, but the uniqueness of each person so that we accompany each other on this journey and all might have a true sense of belonging. We especially ask your blessing on Dr. Julie Sullivan. Fill her with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, counsel, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. Give her a vision of the unique role of Catholic education to embrace whatever is good, whatever is true, and whatever is beautiful. May her words and actions inspire all members of this community to work together with respect and common purpose for the benefit of all. And responding to the prophet Micah, give her the grace to embrace justice in all things, to show mercy to all people, and to walk humbly with her God. Under her guidance, may this university remain faithful to its mission and flourish as a place of encounter and accompaniment for those who come here seeking knowledge and wisdom. And we end with words from the, from the Ignatian Educator's Prayer. Bless us, Lord, and our mission as Ignatian educators. Guide us with your spirit that we may continually grow as a community of companions in the ministry of teaching, working with and learning from one another to discern how best to accompany our students on their journeys to becoming men and women of the Magis, asking always what more they can do for your greater honor and glory. Amen. Thank you, Father Snyder. In keeping with tradition, I now invite representatives from various constituencies to offer words of welcome to our new president. To begin this ceremony, I invite the Honorable Mayor of the City of Santa Clara, Lisa Gilmore, to the podium. Thank you, uh, distinguished guests, students, alumni, faculty, community leaders. 
And on behalf of the City of Santa Clara, we are also represented by uh, Council Members Watanabe and Hardy and our elected Police Chief, Pat Nikolai, and various department heads in this area over here, all from the city. Today is a special day, not just for Santa Clara University, but for the entire city of Santa Clara. As mayor of Santa Clara, I am extremely honored to be here to join the inauguration of Dr. Julie Sullivan to become the first lay person and the first woman to serve as president of this university. As you already know, Santa Clara University is the oldest operating institution of higher learning and is a critical foundation in our city's history. The city of Santa Clara is widely known as the Mission City and home to over 129,000 residents. Every day we celebrate the Mission City and our rich history, diversity, and thriving economy as we are the center of what's possible. As our city grows in housing and development, we value the presence of this distinguished university, which makes up a significant part of our community. As a nationally ranked higher education institution, we are so proud to have Santa Clara University bring together and attract students and the community to this remarkable city. I believe Santa Clara University has the ability for continued success and growth, a strong legacy, a compelling mission, robust and distinctive academic programs, exceptional athletic teams, and the identity of a Jesuit university, which models commitments to its students, to our city, and our residents. The Jesuit tradition is about educating the whole person, mind, body, and soul. And I believe Julie's leadership and experience will prepare students to create a more just, humane, and sustainable world. As you begin this next chapter here at Santa Clara University, I encourage President Sullivan to aim to preserve the core values that have sustained this university for generations while preparing students for the universe, of the university for the future. I'm committed to working closely with you to continue to strengthen the university and the city government relationship as we continue to grow as a community. From educating the next generation, to promoting the values of the university, to engaging with the community and collaborating with the city of Santa Clara, I'm grateful to have you at the helm of this exceptional institution, and I'm confident that your presidency will be filled with resounding success. President Sullivan, congratulations again on your inauguration today as the first woman president and the 30th president of Santa Clara University. Thank you. Mayor Gilmore, thank you. Now it is my honor to introduce the Bishop of the Diocese of San Jose, Bishop Oscar Cantu. President Sullivan, in the name of the Diocese of San Jose, I greet you and welcome you to Santa Clara University. The Diocese of San Jose is young. Erected only 41 years ago, the diocese is co-expansive with Santa Clara County. As you are aware, the diocese is home to Silicon Valley, a conglomerate of worldwide leaders in technology and communication. This presence offers tremendous opportunity while using and benefiting from the advances in technology and communication, the church also raises a voice on behalf of humanity, of the common good of society, of the dignity of the human person, with special concern for the least among us. Of particular concern in recent years is a crisis of humanity manifested in various ways, the ever wide income disparity, which divides our communities more deeply, the housing crisis, often perpetuated by nimbyism, 
the, unique, the unequal public investment in women, children, and families, and the homeless crisis, which is an assault on human dignity and a stain on the soul of California. May we together raise a moral voice in regard to these issues, and may we prepare and inspire leaders in our communities to employ the spirit of innovation to create a more just society for the dignity of all. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is always re relevant to humanity. He brings purpose and fulfillment to our lives. May your work, Dr. Sullivan, and the work of Santa Clara University continue to lift up Christ and his gospel of hope and joy as a beacon of dignity and progress for humanity. I look forward to working with you and the university in the coming years that we might give witness to Christ in the work that we do. God bless you. Thank you, Bishop Cantu. It is now my great pleasure to bring to the podium Laura Nichols, SCU alumna, professor of sociology, and past president of the Faculty Senate Council. Thank you, Provost Morris. From our classrooms and labs, studios, stages, and field sites, and the many other places where our great faculty do our work, we welcome you to SCU, Dr. Sullivan. From our newest faculty who have been here only a few weeks, to those of us who have been here 45 years or more, we are excited to introduce you to the many majors, minors, interdisciplinary, and degree programs, as well as teaching innovations that our faculty have created over the years. We resonate with your deep calling as a teacher and a scholar and your caring concern for each student. We hope you are excited about seeing how our faculty bring our love for our disciplines alive for our students and in our creative and scholarly work. We will look to your deep experience and knowledge in higher education as well as business to help us navigate the benefits and the challenges of living and working in Silicon Valley. And we look forward to working with you to refocus and redefine the work of this university in this place at this time to address past harms and navigate complex realities, to better serve our students, and to promote the common good by bringing together the fruits of our individual and collective intellectual and creative pursuits. We do this in partnership with you and all those who aspire to realize a Santa Clara that transcends our history and lives up to our ideals and future aspirations. Thank you, Laura. The next welcome will be offered by Andrew Corrales, President of the Staff Senate. On behalf of all staff, it is my honor to welcome Dr. Julie Sullivan as the 30th president of Santa Clara University. As staff at SCU, we wear many hats to help support all constituent groups across campus. We are the directors and deans of departments, and we maintain infrastructure and services, uh, both seen and behind the scenes. We support our faculty at many levels, ensuring they have what they need to enrich the learning experience for our students. And we are also front and center supporting our students in various ways along their journeys as Broncos. As hats change from quarter to quarter and year to year, it is the intersectional and interdependent relationships between students, faculty, and staff, which helps keep our shoulders tall so that those changing hats don't fall. 
Individually, we strive to reach unique goals and overcome specific challenges, but oftentimes we see through these obstacles with the support of one another. Together, we are more. The se this sense of togetherness has become increasingly, increasingly evident over the last couple of years as we, students, staff, and faculty have locked arms to navigate the multiple crises that have impacted our campus community. A couple of weeks ago, I was fortunate to meet with Dr. Sullivan alongside past Staff Senate President Joanna Thompson and current President-elect Bill Maines. During this meeting, Dr. Sullivan demonstrated tenderness and care for our inter interdependent and intersectional ecosystem here at SEU. Along with a sense of thoughtful intention as we uh, proceed forward into the unknown, I left that meeting uh, with a great sense of hope and optimism as she begins to lead Santa Clara University through this momentous new chapter in our history. Once again, on behalf of staff here at SCU, we welcome Dr. Julie Sullivan with open arms, open hearts, and we look forward to working together as we embark on this transformative journey. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. It is now my pleasure to introduce Kevin Hamm, President of the Associated Student Government. President Sullivan, Mr. Sullivan, Bella, on behalf of the student body, it is my privilege to welcome you all to Santa Clara University as President Sullivan begins her tenure as our first layperson and woman president. President Sullivan always says that at her core, she's an educator. Well, I discovered this firsthand when, like a true educator, she assigned me and my vice president a reading after our first official meeting. <laughs> In an article written by Ibu Patel, um, it calls on colleges to teach their students to go beyond dismantling the broken and unjust institutions and to instead become active builders in creating the institutions needed to ensure a more just and inclusive society. While not an actual class assignment, I did learn a few things. First, I learned what was likely the learning outcome that Dr. Sullivan wanted to teach us, which was for us to strive to be active participants in building a better system. More importantly, I learned about the type of leadership that President Sullivan would bring to SEU. In working with President Sullivan the past few weeks, I admired how her passions, her experiences, and most importantly, her values drive her intense focus on student experiences and outcomes. This deep commitment to students gives me confidence that President Sullivan will keep our best interests at heart as our campus navigates a rapidly changing world. President Sullivan, congratulations. And as you begin your time with us here at SCU, we students look forward to working with you and forging the path forward for our Santa Clara community. Thank you. Kevin, thank you. I would now like to invite Scott Asher, SCU alumnus and president of the SCU Alumni Association National Board of Directors to offer a welcome on behalf of all SCU alumni. Good morning. Is this a great day to be a Bronco or what? <laughs> President Sullivan, on behalf of the Santa Clara University Alumni Association and your largest constituency, more than 106,000 alumni in all 50 states and 123 countries around the globe, it is my honor to welcome you to the Santa Clara family. In your short time here, you've seen and heard firsthand the passion of our alumni. There is no doubt that we care deeply about this unique place, about each other, our history, our students, and the world that we send them into. The mission of the Alumni Association is to serve and engage the Santa Clara family by fostering lifelong relationships between the university and its alumni. Your vision for what Santa Clara can become will drive how we fulfill that mission in the future. And we look forward to a long collaborative partnership to ensure those bonds only become stronger. Father Lou Bannon, who many consider the patriarch of our modern alumni association, understood deeply the importance of the university's ongoing relationship with its alumni, stating, the university does not relinquish its affiliation with students just because they graduate. Commencement is the right word. 
it is a beginning. As most things, Father Bannon said he was right. Our alumni are lifelong stakeholders, bound together by a shared experience that shapes who they are, how they think, and what they do. They represent the best of Santa Clara in their work, their lives, and their local communities. Their actions reinforce our Catholic Jesuit values and make our world a better place. And there are no better fans of Santa Clara University. No more caring group of competent, conscientious, and compassionate leaders each making his or her mark on the world in a unique way. There is a love and a bond that is unique between our alumni and Santa Clara University. It is the reason it is called the Santa Clara family. We are hopeful for a continued opportunity to work together with you to include alumni voices into our vision, into your vision for a greater Santa Clara. Because as we have spoken, and I know you fully agree, when we talk about the Santa Clara family, we should always be talking about students, faculty, staff, and alumni. So as we enter the university's 171st year and our 142nd year as an alumni association, President Sullivan, we again welcome you and your family to ours. We offer you our unwavering support and our heartfelt prayers as we work together for conti the continued betterment of our beloved Santa Clara. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Next, I would like to invite Brian Nider, SCU alumnus and chief executive officer of AbilityPath, to offer his words of welcome as a community partner. President Sullivan, on behalf of the Bay Area nonprofit community and specifically the special needs community, it is an honor and privilege to welcome you uh, and congratulate you on becoming Santa Clara University's 30th president. As a current member of the Board of Regents, a past president of the Alumni Association, I'm proud that Santa Clara has supported the special needs community in particular through numerous volunteer programs supported by students, faculty, staff, and alumni. For example, the Levy School of Business, the School of Education and Counseling Psychology, the Markula Center for Applied Ethics have all dedicated time and talent focused on supporting ability Pass special needs programs. The students and faculty supporting our mission had been touched by Santa Clara's vision of educating citizens and leaders of competence, conscience, and compassion, and leaders in cultivating knowledge and faith to build a more humane, just and sustainable world. Santa Clara's focus on service to others is a beacon of hope and a reminder to others in our community that they are not alone. The university promotes a culture of service to the most disadvantaged members of society by working to build a more humane, just, faith-filled, and sustainable world. For over 100 years, Ability Pass mission has been to further acceptance, respect, and inclusion for those with intellectual and developmental disabilities Santa Clara cherishes a diverse and inclusive community enriched by people of different backgrounds and respectful of the dignity for all community members. In these Santa Clara's Jesuit values that makes this university a unique, values-based leader in the Silicon Valley. Under your leadership, we are confident Santa Clara will continue to lead by example of compassion and caring. Again, congratulations, President Sullivan. We look forward to you leading Santa Clara and further in our shared mission of academic excellence and service to others. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nider. It is now my pleasure to introduce Paul Jenskow, President and Chief Executive Officer at Robert Half Talent Solutions. SCU Trustee Emeritus and former chair of the SCU Board of Trustees, and I invite him to the podium to offer some words of welcome from the business community. Uh, thank you, Kate. Uh, Dr. Sullivan, on uh, behalf of the business community, it is my great pleasure to greet and congratulate you as the 30th president of Santa Clara University on this historic day.
For 171 years, Santa Clara University has helped shape the hearts and minds of its students through its Jesuit Catholic values and pedagogy. Our university has been a beacon of light, not only for its intellectual rigor and entrepreneurial spirit, but also for the important values that it instills, being people for others. Its alumni have powered the workforce with creativity, ethical foundations, and a burning desire to give back to their community, which has helped Silicon Valley earn its reputation around the world and a world that is a better place because of the work that goes on at this campus. As a former chair of the University Board of Trustees, I can speak firsthand of the commitment and passion that the students, faculty, staff, administration, alumni, and friends have for the continued success of Santa Clara under your leadership. That same passion exists with the Silicon Valley business community as they look forward to partnering with you and the university. Santa Clara University is a jewel that will be shined brighter under your leadership. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Jenskow, for being part of our very special day today. As we continue our welcomes, it is my honor to invite Janet Napolitano, SU alumna and President Emerita of the University of California, to offer a greeting on behalf of higher education. Well, thank you, and thanks so much for having me here with you today. It is great to be back at Santa Clara amidst colleagues, friends, and now, of course, our newest Bronco, Julie Sullivan. You know, I had the pleasure of spending some time with Julie in the weeks preceding this inauguration. And we discussed what qualities make a good university president. And I'd like to share with you what President Sullivan told me are the top three qualities for a university president. Number one is resilience. You know, becoming a university president is like becoming captain of a ship except this ship is full of thousands of students and parents and alumni and trustees. You get the picture. Yeah. <laughs> While steering this enormous responsibility, you have to be resilient in order to pull through the waves. I remember when COVID hit in 2020, and the entire University of California system moved to remote learning. We issued $350 million in dorm refund checks, converted all of our teaching hospitals to be COVID hospitals, and we ran the entire University of California system from my dining room table since our offices were closed. Those weren't smooth waters, but we sailed ahead stronger than ever, I think. Resilience was critical in getting us to the end of the pandemic's lockdown. Now, the second quality President Sullivan listed was energy. Having an enthusiastic captain in the face of adversity and in times of celebration is critical. Those moments mean your thousands of passengers are looking to you for words, actions, next steps, and reassurance. It takes energy to have a full day of meetings with students, faculty, and staff, enjoy dinner with an alumni, and then perhaps go to a concert or play in Mayor Theater or attend a basketball game here in Levy and then get up early the next morning to work on something exciting, like the budget. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But a university president has to be a source of energy, and President Sullivan knows this more than anyone. And the third quality, perhaps most evident from President Sullivan's journey from St. Thomas to Santa Clara, is courage. Courage is stepping up to the plate and being ready and willing to serve. It takes courage to become the first layperson and first woman president of Santa Clara. It takes courage, yeah. It takes courage to be ready to face both calm seas and swelling tides. And it was clear to me in speaking with her, as it is now to all of you, that President Sullivan enjoys these three qualities in abundance. She will be the rising tide that lifts all ships around her, and most importantly, the ship that is Santa Clara University. I am so proud, and as, alum, as an alumna, to stand here and watch Julie become Santa Clara's next president. And as someone who was herself the first woman president, I was the first woman president of the University of California. <laughs> we belong to the same club. And let us both um, uh, work together to make sure that we are not the last. Thank you very much. Secretary Napolitano, thank you so much for being part of this celebration. Now it is my honor to invite SU alumnus, chairman of the Panetta Institute for Public Policy, and former U.S. Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta, to welcome President Sullivan. Well, thank you very much. Madam President, and all of the distinguished guests and members of the Board of Trustees, and Bishop, fathers, faculty, staff, students, ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you how honored I am to participate in this historic celebration of firsts here at Santa Clara University. The founder and first president of Santa Clara College, Father John Nobley, opened the doors of this campus in 1851. For 171 years, the Jesuits have been in charge, including my great classmate and friend, Paul Locatelli. And I'm honored, by the way, to be wearing Paul's robes. Uh, I was asked to do that. <laughs> Paul, I don't know where the hell you're at, but I think I deserve a plenary indulgence for doing this. <laughs> this is a heavy robe. For 110 of those years, this was obviously an all men's school until 1961 when Santa Clara admitted 75 female undergraduates. So, today we inaugurate the first non-Jesuit and more importantly, the first woman president of Santa Clara University. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Santa Clara University to the 21st century. <laughs> I, I think all of us 
take a great deal in pride in this moment. And I, in particular, as a former graduate of Santa Clara in the class of 1960, and then as a graduate of Santa Clara Law School in 1963, like many of all of us, I have witnessed the dramatic changes that have taken place on this campus. The diversity of student body, the quality of the faculty, the magnificent buildings, and the generosity of so many donors, and the increasing focus on the high-tech innovation that is here in Silicon Valley. There is no question in my mind that as a result of those changes, Santa Clara provides an outstanding education to a new generation of leaders in the 21st century. And we all are very proud of our new president, Julie Sullivan. She is indeed a perfect fit for this campus of the 21st century. She's a visionary academic leader, a passionate champion of the tenets of Catholic social teaching. She's an advocate for creating opportunities and economic inclusion for all. And that's exactly what she accomplished when she was president of St. Thomas University in Minnesota. I'm also very pleased that she happens to be a dog lover. When I, when I was in Washington, I brought my dog, Bravo, to both the CIA and the Department of Defense. Bravo sat in on all the briefings for the bin Laden raid <laughs> and never leaked a word, never leaked a word. When I was asked why I had a dog, I quoted Harry Truman, who said, if you want a friend in Washington, get a dog. <laughs> As university president, you want, you want a friend? Get a dog. <laughs> and I know you're going to be bringing your dog to the office, which is great. So we are all very proud at this moment the many changes that have taken place here at Santa Clara. But I think we should also be very proud of what has not changed. The mission, the vision, the values of a Jesuit education remain very much the same going back to Father Nobly, to educate the whole person, educate the whole person, mind, body, and soul, to prepare students to create a more just and humane and sustainable world, to contribute to your community, to understand the moral and ethical implications of your academic work to make the world a better place. Make the world a better place. And to give everyone, everyone, a chance and an opportunity to be able to enjoy the American dream. Because of Santa Clara and because of my Italian immigrant parents, I've had a chance to live the American dream. I used to ask my father, why did you come all of that distance? I came from a poor area in Italy. Why did you come all of that distance to a strange country, L leaving family, leaving friends? Why would you do that? And I never forgot my father's answer, which was because your mother and I believed that we could give our children a better life in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the American dream. And it's the dream that we have for our children and their children, and hopefully their children as well. I've never forgotten 
what my father said. But they also taught me that dreams are just dreams. Unless you are willing to work hard, to sacrifice, and to fight to make those dreams come true. The Jesuit education here at Santa Clara reinforced the words of my parents. I was grounded in my faith. I understand the difference between right and wrong. And I think it's important to be willing to fight in the service of your country. The mission, vision, and values of a Jesuit education have followed me throughout my career in public service. There was a Jesuit when I was here at campus who, who came up to me on the campus and said, Leon, God gives you life, but it's up to you to make a life. And he followed it with a story that I am going to share with you, Madam President, and everyone, because it makes exactly the right message. The Jesuit told me that there was a rabbi and a priest who decided that they would get to know each other a little better. And so they went to events together. And they thought by doing that, they would talk to each other and learn about each other's religion. So one night, they went to a boxing match. And just before the bell rang, one of the boxers made the sign of the cross. The rabbi nudged the priest and said, what does that mean? The priest said, it doesn't mean a damn thing if he can't fight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we bless ourselves with the hope that everything is going to be fine in this country. But very frankly, it doesn't mean a damn thing unless we're willing to fight for it. We are living at a time in our democracy where we are facing huge challenges and crises coming at us from every direction. We've been through a worldwide pandemic. We have an economy that was thrown into a recession and now is struggling to be able to move forward but we have inflation, we have high costs of living, we have growing inequality in our society, we have the threat of climate change that's impacting on our country almost every day, we have polarization in our nation and in our politics, and polarization in a dangerous world as we try to confront tyrants everywhere, and now particularly in the war in Ukraine. I tell the students at the Panetta Institute that in a democracy, we govern either by leadership or by crisis. If leadership is there, we can avoid crisis. But if it's not there, make no mistake about it, we will govern by crisis. But the price of doing that is the loss of trust of the American people in our system of governing. The key to leadership is to educate a new generation of leaders. We, we need to make sure that they have the mission, the vision, and the values of a Jesuit education and are prepared to fight to give everyone a better life. Madam President, you're assuming the role of president at a challenging time in our democracy and in our world. But it's also a time of tremendous opportunity. Education is critical to our democracy. Jefferson said, if a nation expects to be ignorant and free, it expects what never was and never will be. Educating the whole person mind, body, and soul is the historic legacy of a Jesuit education at Santa Clara University. Madam President, you've got a big responsibility, but I want to assure you, you will not be alone. After all, you're a Bronco now.
And we support Broncos, wherever they are. And we will support you in every way we can to make sure that you are a winner and a success as a new and historic president of Santa Clara University. God bless you, and God bless our country. Secretary Panetta, thank you for those warm and wise remarks. And thank you to all of our greeters for their warm words of welcome to President Sullivan. The Santa Clara University Chamber Singers will now perform Set Me as a Seal by Renee Clausen. Thank you, singers, and thank you, Professor Scott Hanaweer, for that lovely song. We now come to the formal investiture and missioning of our new president. Please welcome the board, the chair of the Board of Trustees, Larry Sensini, who will bestow the symbols of the office of president on Julie Sullivan. Well, thank you, Kate. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I really welcome and thank all of you for being here. I thank our wonderful students, our leaders of the future, our dedicated and committed faculty, our committed staff, alumni, community leaders, and of course, our Jesuit community. One of the most important responsibilities of a board of trustees is the selection of the president of the university. It is in that person that the board invests the authority and the responsibility for leading the university, ensuring the implementation of its vision, its mission, its values, and its strategic priorities. It's about promoting its academic excellence as a Catholic and Jesuit university and of course, overseeing its operations, its organizations, its budgets, its policies, and serving as the university's chief spokesperson. The Board of Trustees is pleased and excited with the selection of Dr. Sullivan 
as Santa Clara University's next president. And of course, all of us deeply thank her for accepting this important and challenging position. And now I would like to ask Dr. Sullivan to please come forward. Dr. Sullivan, on behalf of the Board of Trustees of this university and our entire community, I am proud to present you with the symbols of your office as president. As you accept the chain and medallion that we will bestow upon you momentarily, wear it knowing that your leadership is one of service and commitment. Service above all to the students of this great university and its faculty and its staff and its community, both local and global. That community and these students will depend upon your expertise, your energy, and your commitment. It's almost as heavy as the one I'm wearing, so. And now, uh, Dr. Sullivan will be missioned to her work as president of the university by the provincial of the USA West Province of the Society of Jesus, the very Reverend Sean Carroll. Father Carroll. At our last general congregation, the highest governing body of the Society of Jesus affirmed that a Jesuit institution could be said to be Jesuit when it has a clear and definitive relationship with the Society of Jesus. And when its mission aligns with that of the Society by a commitment to a faith that does justice through inter-religious dialogue and a creative engagement with culture. In 2019, Father General Arturo Sosa shared the Society's universal apostolic preferences, the fruit of a process of discernment lasting almost two years. All Jesuits and all apostolic partners were invited to take part in this discernment. Pope Francis confirmed the preferences in a special meeting with Father General Sosa. The preferences give a horizon. They give a point of reference to the whole society of Jesus. They capture our imaginations and they awaken our desires. They unite us in the mission we all share. The preferences name four areas of apostolic focus that are vital for our world today. Showing the way to God, walking with the excluded, journeying with youth, caring for our common home. In such a context, the Jesuit and Catholic mission of the work, whether administered by a Jesuit or by another person, will ultimately be shared with the Superior General of the Society through appropriate lines of authority and the mission priority examine, which Santa Clara University completed in 2019. Leaders commit to the mission of the Society of Jesus as realized in a particular work to strengthen the relationship between the society and a Jesuit work, major superiors engage and support those entrusted with leadership. Regular dialogue conducted in a spirit of trust promotes discernment, accountability, and a clear sense of collaboration for mission. 
local superiors, and local Jesuits do much to foster the connection between a Jesuit ministry and the Society of Jesus. In the official language of the Society of Jesus, we speak of Santa Clara University as a Jesuit work, one that is inspired by the Ignatian charism of seeking God in all things, of promoting a faith that does justice, of interreligious dialogue, and creative engagement with culture. And we speak of the university president as the director of the work, who has the responsibility of directing the apostolic work according to its proper Ignatian character. Santa Clara University is the oldest university in the West and the first Jesuit university in the West. Now Santa Clara is a modern Catholic Jesuit university rooted in one of the world's oldest intellectual and spiritual traditions. In the spirit of rigorous and sympathetic inquiry into all dimensions of human experience. Santa Clara welcomes students from diverse backgrounds and faith traditions to share ideas and engage in open conversations, learning from one another and seeking truth. As a community of scholar servant leaders, Santa Clara joins in the broader task of expanding human knowledge deepening human understanding, exploring human faiths, and serving those in great need. To this end, Santa Clara encourages and supports the research and artistic expression of its faculty and students, and is committed to excellence in all that it pursues. The Santa Clara Board of Trustees has elected Dr. Julie H. Sullivan president of Santa Clara University. And today, in the name of the Society of Jesus and of the USA West Province, I promise our support and collaboration with President Sullivan and Santa Clara University. We know that Santa Clara University, under your stewardship, President Sullivan, will carry this vision forward through the accomplishments of its faculty, staff, students, and alumni, and will continually strive for the modus in all its programs and initiatives. Santa Clara University was established by and entrusted to the Society of Jesus in 1851 after rigorous discussion and due diligence, President Sullivan, the Board of Trustees of Santa Clara University, has elected you president and asked that the Society of Jesus mission you to be the first lay president of Santa Clara University. As provincial of the USA West Jesuit province of the Society of Jesus, I ask whether you accept this mission. I do. Will you shape your decisions conscious of the mission of the Society of Jesus, this by a commitment to a faith that does justice through interreligious dialogue and a creative engagement with culture which has characterized Santa Clara for many decades? I shall. Will you regularly enter into dialogue with the Society of Jesus through its legitimate superior concerning those matters which touch directly upon its Catholic and Jesuit mission of the university as we work together to support you and Santa Clara University. With great gratitude to God for the gift of your leadership of this wonderful institution of higher learning, and in recognition of the extraordinary gem that Santa Clara University is for the church and the society of Jesus. I mission you to serve as president and director of the work. 
I promise that the Society of Jesus will support you in your work, collaborate with you in fostering the mission we share, and advance this wonderful university's work through prayer, witness, and service. And so, President Sullivan, may the gracious mercy and wisdom of our God displayed so fully in the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus be your constant support and beacon throughout the days of your ministry at Santa Clara University. Amen. I'm very pleased to present to you Dr. Sullivan, the 30th president of Santa Clara University. Thank you. Thank you so much. And greetings, Mr. Sonsini, Bishop Cantu, Father Carroll, Father Calero, Father Ng, Professor Kloppenberg, Secretaries Panetta and Napolitano, leaders of the Muekma Ohlone tribes, all distinguished members of the platform party, faculty, staff, students, alumni, my friends and colleagues from the University of St. Thomas and the University of San Diego, my dear family, those who are here with me today, son, daughters, grandsons, brother, niece, and my best friend and soulmate, my husband, Bob, and those watching virtually and here in spirit, my mother in Florida, my son in North Carolina, and my daughter and family in Belgium. I appreciate all of your prayers and support, and am honored and blessed to stand before you today. However, today is not about me, despite how many times you seem to have heard my name. <laughs> today, we celebrate Santa Clara University. We are here to affirm its powerful mission, commemorate its past, reflect on the world in which it exists today, and look with great hope and excitement towards its future. Santa Clara's vision, as we've heard, has always been to educate citizens and leaders of competence, conscience, and compassion, and cultivate knowledge and faith to lead to a more humane, just, and sustainable world. But what does that mean for us? As we pursue this vision, we seek to preserve the best of the past while stepping boldly into the future. As our beloved past president, Father Paul Locatelli said during our 150th anniversary celebration, Jesuit education is not a univocal concept or a timeless blueprint. Santa Clara must be a community driven by dreams and rooted in human experience. We must be individuals with an abiding thirst for the new and a people of community and tradition. In pursuing our vision, we draw great strength from St. Ignatius, who is often depicted with his left foot raised and forward, while his right foot is behind, planted solidly on the ground. St. Ignatius himself describes strong leaders as contemplatives in action, leaders who are eager to move forward and face the world's most vexing problems while retaining a grounding in their faith and values and calling of God. I would like to reflect today on three themes that connect Santa Clara's past to its future. The first is rigor and relevance. 
At Santa Clara, we uphold an uncompromising standard of academic excellence in our teaching, learning, creativity, and scholarship. And a Santa Clara education has always been characterized by exceptional rigor and relevance. As you've also heard many times today, we were founded in 1851, and we were once dubbed by an early Jesuit as the Gold Dust College. As the first university in the state of California, Santa Clara was founded to provide a college education for students from families who had immigrated from all over the world to seek their fortunes during the California Gold Rush. The university also served Californios and other Spanish speakers. Our earliest curriculum was the classical Jesuit curriculum of the time and included Latin, Greek, literature, philosophy, science, and allied subjects. However, those who had migrated to California to seek their fortunes, few appreciated the practical value of studying Latin and Greek, and a parallel English curriculum dubbed the scientific course was soon introduced. In response to the gold rush, science played a major role in the curriculum of both the classical and scientific paths of study. Relevance has always been important here. Father Charles Messia founded the college's, college's science department in 1854 and purchased an impressive array of scientific instruments and minerals. The college imported from Europe a comprehensive set of scientific and chemical apparatus, including the latest inventions, and students received extensive and advanced training in mineral analysis, which was relevant at that time. Today, this pursuit of scientific understanding weaves throughout Silicon Valley and our university. The recently opened Sobrato Campus for Discovery and Innovation brings faculty and students from science, technology, engineering, math, and entrepreneurship together under one roof to foster multidisciplinary collaboration and enhance the way we solve the world's most vexing problems. Hands-on state-of-the-art labs include the Robotic Systems Lab, Latimer Energy Lab, and Imaginarium Virtual Reality Lab. The Sobrato campus and its possibilities are foundational for launching creative and possibly pioneering new programs that push the boundaries of knowledge. These programs will intersect humanities, social science, and natural science disciplines and provide relevant knowledge, skills, and mindsets for the societal and workforce needs of tomorrow. Examples of such programs are at the intersection of data science and one or more of the plethora of disciplines with which it intersects, such as ethics, anthropology, communications, business, and law. Examples also include programs that combine technology innovation with such areas as public health, psychology, and design. All of these possibilities capture the rigor and relevance of Santa Clara's future, a future that will only be relevant if it reflects inclusive excellence and intercultura interculturality, which is our second theme. Inclusive excellence is a framework adopted by many universities, including Santa Clara, to more fully integrate and expand our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. It helps us systematically leverage the many dimensions of diversity throughout our community for the purpose of enhancing student learning and institutional excellence. Interculturality refers to the equitable interaction of diverse cultures. In intercultural communities, there is deep understanding of and respect for one's own culture and the culture of others. There's the mutual exchange of ideas and cultural norms and the development of strong relationships of friendship. As a Jesuit university, we are of the world and, and 
of a world that is interconnected and is rich in diversity and culture. Because the world is our home, as the first Jesuit said, every culture that dwells in it is our sister. That is why we must continue to cultivate, nourish, and sustain our university as a diverse, equitable, and inclusive intercultural community. When Santa Clara was established, our first enrollment list included students from, of course, across the United States, but also from around the globe. Mexico, Central America, South America, Canada, Europe, Australia, and Algeria. And half of our first students were Protestants. During the first 25 years of Santa Clara's history, nearly a quarter of the students were Spanish-speaking or had Spanish surnames, and the annual bulletin was published in both English and Spanish. We also know there were others who lived and worked in this region, especially the Ohlone and Muwakma Ohlone people who were not afforded the same opportunity. I see a future for Santa Clara where we are more inclusive and welcoming and where we continue to increase and enhance our racial, cultural, and socioeconomic diversity to better reflect the world in which we live. I believe it is imperative that we embrace our responsibility as a Jesuit Catholic university to make a greater contribution to social mobility in our society. Increasingly, universities are being measured by and held accountable for this responsibility. I'm pleased to share at Santa Clara, our lower income and first generation students tend to achieve the same or higher graduation rates as our overall student body. However, we do not serve as high a percentage of underrepresented lower income and first generation students as some of our peers. Last month, Santa Clara joined the American Talent Initiative, a collective of leading colleges and universities who are committed to accelerating opportunity for talented low and moderate income students. Our, thank you. Our commitment will encompass expanding and creating student pipeline and mentoring partnerships, securing additional need-based scholarship support, and ensuring equitable student outcomes and participation in high-impact learning practices. I also imagine a future for Santa Clara where all students engage in rich and deep local and global learning opportunities that immerse them in other cultures and socioeconomic environments. In this future, every Bronco graduates with well-developed intercultural competence, tacit knowledge, skills, and creativity to thrive well beyond Santa Clara. Rigor and relevance with inclusive excellence and interculturality provide the foundation for my final theme which is truth and social justice. As a Jesuit Catholic university, we are called to shine a light on and see the world as it is. And we are called to have the courage, empathy, and compassion to work with others to make it more humane, just, and sustainable. As our former president, president Father, Father William Rewalk, shared at his inauguration, a university must be a place where freedom of inquiry is paramount. We cannot know how to change the world if we do not see it as it is. For if we do not investigate, we cannot know. And if we do not know, we can never make a moral choice. A university exists not merely to create and impart knowledge, but also to help students make responsible and ethical decisions decisions that advance the common good. Father Rewak concludes that the spirit of Jesuit education demands that work and study result in action. One such light, Santa Clara faculty, staff, and students have been shining on the world for almost 20 years is focused on environmental justice. 
Father Michael Ng reinforced this in his 2009 inauguration address when he called for the promotion of environmental justice and for examining the ethical dimensions of how we treat the physical war world. In 2020, Santa Clara achieved carbon neutrality for energy usage. And our Center for And our Center for Sustainability has been designated among only 16 institutions in the country as a Center for Sustainability across the curriculum. This year, Santa Clara made a commitment to Pope Francis's Laudato Si action platform. This is a seven-year journey that he is calling us to, to join him on. It will be a journey of defining and implementing our unique plan to deepen our community's integral ecology, which integrates environmental and social justice in our academics and research, operations, campus life, and outreach. The Superior General of the Society of Jesus, Father Arturo Sosa, shone another bright light for us in a talk he made to the Assembly of the International Association of Jesuit Universities this past summer. This light is on the threat to truth. We increasing, increasingly live in a world that employs post-truth and the invention of reality as instruments of domination, control, and governance. And social media amplifies this strategy. For only the loudest, the most controversial, and the most absurd break through. They gain followers, hone their game, and the effects compound. Modern points of view seldom gain likes or retweets. However, a recent poll by Civic Science surveyed over 4 million Americans and found a near equal number, 18 and 19 percent, held far right and far left political views. However, a full 63% fell somewhere in the middle. But we don't hear them because the polar 37% dominate the discourse. This can be particularly trou troublesome for college age students. The 2022 National College Student Survey conducted by the Panetta Institute of Public Policy reports that 57% of college students use social media as their primary source of information about politics and civic affairs. I don't think that was you, Broncos. However, this is a source of understanding for many people of all generations in our world, young and old. And what about the alternative truth or reality created in the metaverse? How does our time in a virtual world where everyone has a virtual wardrobe and other virtual options to swipe through? What does this time do to our ability to sustain a culture of encounter and to authentically connect to one another and to God? This virtual environment is upon us. As a Jesuit Catholic university committed to the mission of truth and justice, we have a paramount responsibility to help to distinguish truth from the falsehoods and contortions used to perpetuate power and injustice. We must amplify the voices of the silent major majority and create and promote venues for balanced factual information. We must educate citizens who are knowledgeable, free, hold many points of view, capable of dialogue and committed to the pursuit of the common good. And we must educate citizens who seek to authentically accompany one another and who are guided and comforted by their God. Also at the Panetta Institute, also in the Panetta Institute 2022 National Survey, the majority of college students reported for the first time in the 22 history of the survey, that they do not feel they will have a better life than their parents. 
This is college students for the first time. We don't feel we'll have a better life than our parents. They are concerned about their future and the future of our country. This generation cares immensely about our world and its challenges. I believe they can become the citizens and leaders of competence, conscience, and compassion, ethical citizens and leaders who have the knowledge and faith to create a more humane, just, and sustainable world. And our mission is to educate and inspire them, to help form them into men and women for and with others, and to help them discern God's calling for their lives. I am moved by the words of Amanda Gorman, the first National Youth Poet Laureate. These words are taken from her poem entitled, An Ode We Owe, which she recited at the 2022 UN General Assembly meeting this, excuse me, last month. This morn, let it be sworn that we are one human kin, grounded not just by the griefs we bear, but by the good we bring in to anyone out there. I only ask that you care before it's too late, that you live aware and awake, that you lead with love and hours of hate. I challenge you to heed this call. I dare you to shape our fate. Above all, I dare you to do good so that the world might be great. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Sullivan, for your inspiring words. I know I speak for the entire Santa Clara campus in saying that we are inspired by your vision and excited about the opportunity to build the premier Catholic Jesuit university. We look forward to working with you to bring your goals into reality and to prepare future generations of students for lives of service. And now I invite the Santa Clara University Chamber Singers to sing our alma mater. I now invite the Reverend Michael Ng of the Society of Jesus, the 28th president of Santa Clara University and current chancellor of Loyola Marymount University to read a poem for us written by Reverend William Rewalk of the Society of Jesus, Santa Clara University's 26th president. Father Rewalk could not be with us today in person and wrote these words for President Sullivan. Arrival at Santa Clara for President Julie Sullivan. You walk into your new office and don a new robe. It's soft and warm and multicolored like sunrise on a Mediterranean shore. All furniture is in place 
Your transplanted books are a comfort, and the evening bell in the mission rings out the life you have chosen. Off in a corner, a ghost speaks. Another ghost responds. Several others add their laughs in welcome. All their voices rise in prayer for their new occupant, whispering words of peace, begging for the gold of justice. These old ghosts, your friends, carry on their shoulders worlds of wisdom and harbor in their hearts all the joy you will know, all the love you will feel, all the words you will carve, as now your voice with theirs will rejoice in the new sunrise. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Father Ng. As we come to the conclusion of our ceremony, I would like to invite Bishop Kantu to close with a final blessing. Let us pray. Wise and loving God, with marvelous craftsmanship and ingenuity, you created a world of harmony and beauty, reflective of your own life as a trinity of persons, creating humanity in your own image and likeness. You invite us to participate in your creative work, building a world of justice and peace, love and truth, dignity, and generosity. As we reflect on the work of Santa Clara University, may the work here inspire and form young minds and hearts to accept the invitation to build a world that reflects your truth and goodness, your generosity and wisdom, your beauty and love. We ask your blessings in particular upon Julie Sullivan as she begins her work on these hallowed grounds of St. Clair. Like Clair, may she rely on your wisdom, strength, providence, and love. With Joseph, may she build a solid foundation of faith and love. May Solomon guide her with wisdom in her deliberations. May Luke remind her to place the poor and dispossessed at the center. May Micah help her to walk humbly with this community to her entrusted. And may Mary, our mother, help her to ponder the wonders of Christ among us with confidence in your presence and love. We ask all of this in your holy name, amen. Thank you, Bishop Cantu. Please also joining us in thanking all of those who made this day possible, the inauguration committee, numerous staff and faculty, as well as the University, Santa Clara University Symphony Orchestra, Chamber Stingers, and distinguished guests. <laughs> the inauguration ceremony will conclude with a recessional of faculty and distinguished guests. All are invited to join President Sullivan at a reception in the Mission Gardens immediately following. Please remain standing in your place until the recessional is completed. And now, please join us in officially congratulating Dr. Julie Sullivan as Santa Clara University's 30th president. Thank you.